There are two articles that we're focusing on. Both talk about a government contract to buy syringes with RFID tracking for COVID vaccinations. So let's verify. Will vaccine syringes inject you with an RFID chip? Any claims that these government vaccines will inject trackers are false. What is it that's actually being transmitted that's causing all of these things? Is it a combination of the protein, which now we're finding has a metal attached to it? I'm sure you've seen the pictures all over the internet of people who've had these shots and now they're magnetized. They can put a key on their forehead, it sticks. They can put spoons and forks all over them and they can stick. What do you make of this? There is no evidence of this, and let's not equivocate. Uh, there is no uh, microchip or tracking device or some sort of other product that's attached. Welcome to the Journey to Forever podcast, where we discuss the highs and lows of life and love. Join us, your hosts, Flo and Joe, for a weekly recalculation of our roots as we navigate the twists and turns with candid conversation, comfort food and laughter. Welcome back forever family to this, our 29th episode. Wow, 29th episode. Yes, I know we've been missing in action for a bit, but Joe and I had to have a little bit of R&R. If you have been a fan of this podcast for some time, you know that, yeah, there are times when we've been very, very busy. Anyways, if you are new and this is your first time, we would love for you to subscribe and come back, join the Forever family. Stick around. We like having new people in our crew. Today, we are diving back in with a very juicy topic. Joe, wouldn't you say it's a juicy topic? (laughs) That would be my choice of words, but all right, we'll go with juicy. Okay, what would be your word then? Testy. It's a very testy topic. Testy. Mm -hmm. Well, tests are involved, and if you have no idea what we're talking about, we're talking about... The COVID-19 vaccine. So if you caught the trailer for this episode, you would remember that we asked the question, how would you feel if your husband or wife or girlfriend or boyfriend didn't share your perspective on getting the COVID-19 vaccine? We asked you to send in your feedback. And we we got one or two responses, which would make up our first segment, which is, what's your story? Wow, Joe, it's been so long you forgot what our first segment is. (laughs) What's your story? Yes, what's your story? (laughs) Typically, we would share one of our personal stories, but we're going to keep it all on topic today, COVID-19. So, I would share this, this response and I will try to say it in my best Trini accent in the way that I interpret that the commenter meant. This commenter said, well, huh, that happened with my mom day before and my mother not sleeping with you, man. I am reading it just as she said it. <laughs> All right. So, you know, things serious when Tanti and Uncle decide that they can't sleep in the same bed. Yeah, that's extreme. That's when they know it's serious. Real, real serious. Serious? So, so people, I don't think that I would ever be that drastic with you. <laughs> <laughs> but he and I have had some very lengthy conversations about this vaccine. And? <laughs> oh, yes, we have. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. Because admittedly, we didn't always see eye to eye on this topic. I wouldn't say that. We just had, not that we had different views. Mm-hmm. It's just that I was more skeptical. Mm-hmm. 
you know, because of the time frame, you know. Then it was a lack of information, right. you know, sorting out the real from the fiction. Okay. You know, so that had me skeptical. So, you know, can't just rush into something now, you know. All right. So we get into, into the meat of things now, people. And I would say this. I agree because like you, I was hesitant at first. I recall a conversation that I was having with a friend of mine. And I said, listen, in summary, is my body my choice? I know people often say that with respect to other medical decisions, but that's how I felt because, as you said, there was so much information about things happening to people when they take the vaccine. We're not talking about conspiracy theories here. We're talking about medical repercussions, you know, people getting ill um, as a result of taking the vaccine or so it was it was reported on the news at that time right yeah so so for me um i think and and i'm I'm going to break it down in a few steps to me how i uh choose to approach the conversation with you joe or or this not only you because like i said i have had this conversation with many different people in my life. So it's not only my significant other, my partner, Joe, it's close friends of mine, it's family members about this topic because you care about your family and friends as well. Oh yeah, of course. It's, it's people you interact with in general, you know? Yeah. So you have to see and take care of everybody, try to have everybody on the same page and gather information just as you were gathering information, most likely they were gathering information and it picks sense from nonsense from all that has been gathered. Okay, so for me, before the information gathering, for me, the, the, my first step was to listen. Because I would, don't quote me on this meaning, I can't remember who said this quotation, but I always remember, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And I try to apply that in situations that, as you say, could be testy. Yeah, well, it goes to the adage, uh, measure twice, cut once. Well, if, if that's where you want it, how you want to understand it or frame it, sure. So for me, I had to listen because I treat this decision about, the, about taking the vaccine like I would any other decision. I go based on what the facts say. And facts meaning an expert in the field. The, the experts say X, Y, and Z, and this is what I'm going with, right? Say, for instance, let's just say I get a diagnosis, right? God forbid the diagnosis is, um, ma'am, you have diabetes, right? Yeah. Okay, what does that mean for me, doc? Right? Some, some one doctor might say, just write a prescription one time and say, I need you to take X, Y, and Z. Another doctor might say, well, listen, you can try to lose weight and perhaps in losing any weight, it might reduce your risk and, and by extension. But it, it, dep- it all depends. So for me, it's always go back to, to listening. Yeah, well, the multiple opinions. Yes. You know, start, start with listening because a lot of people... Um, may have various views. And as, as we're talking about views, right? In preparing for this episode, I came across an article on Washington Post and I will quote what it says. Specialists, I'm quoting here, specialists who study vaccine uptake tend to divide the hesitant into a few general groups, all with a degree of overlap. One group is the apathetic, those who view their shots as an inconvenience or unnecessary given their circumstances. Another includes people who are skeptical of the medical science behind the shots or wary of their safety. And a third is made up of people who refuse the shots for political or ideological reasons. I think, end quote, I think, most of the persons I've spoken to fall into group number two, where they are skeptical of the medical science. Well, what about you? 
Yeah, I think it would be that um, because skeptical, to be real, that's how I keep it. Mm -hmm. They have no idea who to trust. So it came down, they will be skeptical because it came down to trust issues. They don't trust what mainstream media has to say. Mm -hmm. And usually what was a big problem Mm -hmm. was that the people who gave most of the information Mm -hmm. were politicians in the beginning and not actual doctors and nobody. I don't care who it is. Mm -hmm. Most people don't trust politicians. Okay. So when they come, they event, they, they instantly think, okay, this man or woman lying. Okay. From the jump. So they have, they take everything with a handful of salt, not a pinch. So the right. damage was done in the beginning. Okay. I, I never thought of it like that, meaning the, the voice, the, the person at the front being the politician leading to, people's hesitancy i never thought of it like that because uh, again even though they may have spoken i think i still trusted what uh, um virologists sa- said or people like dr fauci people who study viruses who study diseases who study pandemics i listen to, to what they say so for me in my mind i drowned out all the noise i may have heard it but i it put it in the back of my mind because I didn't think it was as important as what a medical doctor or even locally what the doctors on the press conference panels, what they said, that's what I used or relied on for my information more than anything else. Yeah, that's good for you. But majority of people who really live carefree, they mm-hmm. use those people. Right. First person they saw were politicians. Yeah. Who took the lead and wanted to show I'm in charge. And they spoke out of turn, basically. They started to talk about a virus as if they knew what was going on. And the medical people came after. Okay. You know, they will step in front and say, they didn't come out immediately and say, well, I am not the expert on this matter. Mm Mm-hmm. We have an expert here. They will tell you what's going on. They began to speak. Out of turn, they spoke about the virus, where it came from, who did it. Right. Well, they, they were in charge and, you know, it, it will go away and we know and this. Mm-hmm. They knew everything as politicians. They knew when it, will, when it began. They knew when it going to end. They know who it, who it affected. And then they brought in the experts. Mm-hmm. And the experts now, they wanted to fall in line. Right. And not contradict what the mm, quotation, um, the leaders were saying. Okay. Trying not to make them look foolish. Okay. You know, so that, the, the model up at the beginning was already, you know, they say Ben are three while it's young. Right. So it was already bent in a certain direction at the start. Okay. And all people need really is a, a launch pad. And they will run with it in many different directions because they didn't have the right direction in the first place. So they just had to branch out and make up every story under the sun because they didn't see it as coming from a credible source. They will always see it as, Let's read between the lines. Maybe, Mm -hmm. you know? So that started the problem from the get-go. So after and as we are now, it's a matter of correction. True. True, because they have have been, well, not here locally in Trinidad and Tobago, but in other places, they have been mandates, rescinding of mandates, reinstituting of mandates. So I agree that that back and forth, to and on through in, frustrates a lot of people. And, and if you were hesitant, it may have possibly increased your hesitancy. Yeah, because you would say, see why I didn't take that thing? Yeah. Because you'd, you'd, the people who supposedly should be in the know seem unsure themselves. Yes. Okay. So, so for me, moving on to point number two, in 
seeking information from legitimate sources. In that instance, yes, I don't have a direct line to virologists or immunologists or epidemiologists or whoever the experts are studying this. For me, I always try to go to a reputable source. A reputable source meaning a legitimate news <laughs> station. <laughs> and the reason why I'm saying that, because point number two, seek information from a legitimate source. Let me quote this article posted on Guardian.com on the 17th of July this year, 2021. It says, and I quote, the vast majority of COVID-19 anti-vaccine misinformation and conspiracy theories originated from just 12 people. A report by the Center for Countering Digital Hate, CCDH, cited by the White House this week, found. The CCDH finds this information doesn't. Yes, that's, that's a, 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 in quotation marks, this information doesn't have combined, as in 12. yes, have a combined following of 59 million people across multiple social media platforms. So just understand that 12 people with a following of 59 million. And think within that 59 million, each one tell one something. Right. And because we could stop here and think, close our eyes and Think about all the persons in our WhatsApp or our Facebook or whatever other social media platform that we interact with on a daily basis who have sent us some video about, oh my God, don't get the vaccine because it have a chip in it. Oh my God, um, don't get the vaccine. You will connect to Bluetooth. <laughs> Lots of, we know the very outlandish things that have been said. So again, for me, People, I am not telling you whether to take the vaccine or not. I am just saying go to a legitimate source, which I think you both, you and I did. Yeah. So in addition to the news I'm talking about, go into people who, one, might be your, your, your primary care doctor or your, your GP. And two, if you know somebody with any medical field, you talk to them directly, ask them questions. Hey, what do you think? Tell me wh how you feel about it. Because yeah. you have a personal relationship with them and you trust what they have to say. That's the route I went. I went to a friend who is a doctor, a good friend of mine, and I told him straight because it wasn't any, how, I, how would I say, no red tape, you know, bureaucracy, anything mm -hmm. of the sort. I was like, doc, they made straight. What is your views on this vaccine? Mm -hmm. Let me know. And he was like, all right. <laughs> and he broke it down for me mm -hmm. as minimal as I could get it. It was the baseline. Give you where, what happened? What is the reasons for some of the misinformation? Where it's coming from? Why? Of course, it came down to financing and money. And yeah, so he broke it down as best as possible. And he told me all the facts. And at the end of it, he say, well, it's up to you, but I recommend that you do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Right? And But he did that after telling me everything. I'm talking the good, the bad, everything. That right. What could happen, what has happened, mm -hmm. you know, on each end, the good and the bad. Yeah. Because we're not denying that the, the, we're not denying the veracity of news reports that you've heard or people have taken the vaccine and they have, like, you know, within the two weeks period following getting the shot, they've developed X, Y, and Z. I believe that is happening because if we study. Of course, the, the, because it happens with any other vaccine. I know, and, and we just study statistics, general statistics. You have a, a bell curve. We know that there will always be outliers. And plus, your body and my body is, are two distinctly different things. Yeah. So whereas my body, I could get a vaccine and I might be good. You take it, and all of a sudden you realize, wait, eh, something not something right. Something not right. So yeah. I, again, that's why I, I agree. Go to your primary care physician. That should be 
they put one of the key people that you talk to and say, Doc, you know me, you know <laughs> all sorts of things about me. Even if you need to do uh, some sort of medical, I mean, and do some blood work, test, test whatever, just yeah. so that you're comfortable that your body is healthy enough to receive a vaccine. Because think about it like this. Even if you, two people mm-hmm. could be identical twins. Right. I can have one beer, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But my identical twin might have one beer and staggering, out cold, sleeping, you know, unable to catch themselves. Right. Because you never know at that point in time how your body is going to respond. Right. And suppose the other twin just not a custom drinking. And not a drinker. Mm-hmm. Just not intake. Yeah. You know, you, you never know. So, so yeah, I, I, again, people, there are lots and lots and lots of misinformation. And for me, that's the thing that I'm most scared about because people feel so comfortable believing something that seems so outlandish. As, you know, Charlemagne the God always says, he says, who wants to believe the truth, believe the truth when the lie is so much more entertaining? Right? Yeah. And I'm like, every time he says it, I'm like, oh, but I understand what he means. People love the fact that, oh my God, they could go and they have something to talk about. It's like, Gil, you're here? It's the same reason why people slow down to watch accidents. It, yeah. Why would you want to see that kind of trauma mm-hmm. when you could just drive and go away just and know say that, a prayer, hope that yeah, the person is okay, and do, yeah, without having that traumatic effect on your mind for yeah. long term? But people love the negative in things; mm-hmm. it's more entertaining. Yeah, you know. So while we're talking about get, gathering information and having conversations with your significant other. One thing I would caution too is that because, as Joe said, this topic is testy, um, it, once you realize that the person, one, is not really listening to legitimate sources, what would be my tactic would be to pack the conversation until temper school, right? Until somebody, the person more open to, to hearing. And two, don't be throwing information at them all the time. Because I think then it becomes, again, a game of, oh, you just trying to convince me to get this vaccine. So that could have the opposite effect in making a person more entrenched in and not going to do this just because you pestering me so much and not going to do it. Yeah. Um, to be devil's advocate, mm-hmm. I personally would not pester anybody to take the vaccine or mm-hmm. be behind them. Go and take the vaccine, you know, mm-hmm. always behind them to take it because, as we said before, Mm-hmm. sometimes people may take it and have negative effects. Yes. And if I am the person to have told that person, go get the vaccine, do it. You need to do it. Mm-hmm. Or else, if you don't do it, you're going to die. And then say the person actually is caves in. Right. Goes and get the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Two days later, End up in hospital. and mm-hmm. whatever, they're in hospital mm-hmm. and the worst happens. Mm-hmm. How do you could you even imagine the guilt? Yes. You would feel. Mm-hmm. And we're talking that guilt will last the rest of your life. Yeah. So, yeah. most you could do is make suggestions, give your information mm-hmm. as you know it, mm-hmm. right? Because your information might be right. Right. You say it, it's your information as you know it. And let that person make their own decision. Okay. I, you know, I that's agree. My, that's the best advice I could give. I would say don't give your information. You find legitimate sources when both parties are willing to to have a a cool, calm, collected conversation. Then let the let the share share the links. Everything is online now. Yeah, but yeah, share the yeah, links and let the person. Is that some people? Like you have, we live in a world where some people not connect, as in. Whoever goes on the internet, be it okay. They might watch some TV and whatever they say on the TV, that's it. Who are you talking about, Grandma? You no, know, it have you no, know, it have people who just don't care. Who all they think about is a party and informative things. They would not check on. Okay. They would not even look. They wouldn't give a second thought. They would take their information when they're lying by the bar 
and hear somebody talk. Wrong talk. Okay. Well, that's them. I'm but talking you, about. You know, but I'm, there are people out there like that. Yeah, well, um, even those people, I think should you should stop because this is something that you're putting into your body, and it's not like somebody say it's not like you're taking a tablet and you take one and it could stop taking the rest. Once the needle go in, the plunger yeah. is depressed. The vaccine inside. The There's no taking it out. On. Exactly. So even if you are not one to follow news religiously, to me, this is one time when you need to adopt your habits or and you know change your habits and read something. Even if it's five minutes. Find one legitimate news source and just read for five minutes. Or you go on, on YouTube, you don't have to read. Go to a legitimate news um, channel on YouTube and listen to, to an expert talk about it. That shouldn't take you more than five minutes, if so long, right? So there, there are many avenues for you to get good information without having to read through a research paper or something. <laughs> yeah. My advice to people like that, if mm-hmm. you have a significant other mm-hmm. who is dead set against the vaccine mm-hmm. or whatever reason, I would advise you take them for a doctor's checkup. Take okay. the doctor for a regular checkup and just let the doctor throw it out there. You know, like ask them, you know, you could have a conversation with the doctor before saying, okay, my husband is coming in, whatever. Um, could you just inform him on the vaccine? You know, just tell him. Okay. Just drop it there. You don't have to say, I say it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you inform him as his doctor. Right. And yeah, let them have that conversation. Yeah. A- another thing I think we need to consider, particularly around people who might make up excuse. And now you, the excuse is not really valid because we have a lot of walk-in or drive through locations locally here in Trinidad and Tobago. But before... Like I faced a line for four hours only to be turned away. Before, when you didn't have ready access to the vaccine, the person might say, oh, well, I don't have time. I'm not going to stand up in no line and all of those things. So for me too, another thing could be an incentive. Like, you know, plan the idea in the head. Yes, we may not necessarily be able to travel all the way to the U.S. No, if you, I mean, some people are, but just like, uh, I want to go to Bego, like, <laughs> Independence Day coming up, let me go to Bego for the weekend. Uh, and you you want that experience and you would feel more comfortable having both your shots, right? And so that on the off chance you're exposed to somebody, you know you have a fighting chance, you know, of, of beating the, the, the virus. Yeah. yeah, so offer some some sort of incentive. Or maybe it is that before this pandemic hit, they had a trip and all they postpone the trip and you say, you know, them thing going and expire, so we have to go by X, Y, and Z time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but the thing, the weird thing is, you got to know a country's culture. Right. Because where we are uh-huh. in Trinidad, our culture is when something is too readily available, nobody wants it. Everybody wants to be in that exclusive category. Before when it was hard to get, mm-hmm. lines would be long. Mm-hmm. Now that it's readily available, where you can just walk in, everybody would like, now, oh man, I ain't going to do that. They, they're always there, man. I'll go pass back tomorrow. Uh, and the next day, nah, man, you go, nah, I'm mean going down there right now, now. Nah. I you know. want to have more faith in my fellow train begonians that that is not the case. You may be I truly, you may be truly right, Joe, but I want to believe that that's not the case. <laughs> I want to believe, I want to believe that everybody who has ever considered getting a vaccine has used one of the many um, locations available, many means available of getting one. I that's why I want to believe. I'm hoping that that's true. <laughs> well, people are procrastinators. Okay, you know. Simple thing as going to the grocery. People would wait until the last possible minute to decide to go to the grocery. Okay, look at this. I'm sure you have come across it already. Where, hey, I have to go to the store. Oh, you know, that's since the morning. Mm-hmm. You believe, Dali, all day. And then you go ask, what time that store closing? 
four o'clock, and it's twelve o'clock now. And you will go like a time, man. And okay. then you will be hustling. Mm-hmm. And you will reach to that store like five minutes to four o'clock. Then go in and say, yeah, I'll make it. Well, I hope that if that is the case, that you also consider another point, the impact. And what I mean by the impact, I mean the personal impact, meaning we know some employers are threatening some people's job security if they don't get vaccinated. Yeah. Or, you know, some people have lost their jobs because of the whole pandemic and lockdown. So then they are looking for a job now and we know it, we know that plenty um vacancy posts have in have a, a line in which indicates that or references that you should you provide proof that you have been at least been vaccinated. So that threatens your job security or your, your ability to take care of yourself and your family. So and that I find there is the problem because we're talking facts here. This is not what I said. Mm-hmm. These are what the experts said. Mm-hmm. That if you don't have the vaccine, you can get COVID-19. Right. Right? You have the vaccine, you can get COVID-19. Mm-hmm. In both instances, you can spread COVID-19. Agreed. The only difference is, is that you're, by having the vaccine, your body doesn't have to prepare to fight COVID-19. Yes. It's already on the defensive and ready to identify it when it comes into your body. Yeah. So, so you have a better chance you have of a better chance. fighting it off. Yeah. So if I am working with a co-worker or mm-hmm. somebody coming into the business mm-hmm. who isn't vaccinated, they have to worry about me more than I have to worry about them because I have a better fighting chance against it virus mm-hmm. than they do. But you never know. But why that. they have to worry about you? I because try to I can spread it. I could be partying every night lining around people with COVID-19 okay. and that unvaccinated person most they go to Bible study. Okay, so this is, this is my one peeve with the quote-unquote experts, the quote-unquote leaders in the messaging. I don't think that we should be Casting blame on any group, whether vaccinated or unvaccinated, in terms of spreading. The facts are, whether you are vaccinated or, or not, not, you can contract or you can spread COVID-19. Yes. That, that's the facts, right? Facts. If, if anybody knows otherwise, feel free to leave a comment when this episode <laughs> goes live and it's posted on yes. our Instagram at Jenny to Forever TV. Because those are the facts as we got it. That's the facts as... From the mainstream information Exactly. Media. New ma- news channels, legitimate news sources. So, I don't like that messaging because I think you cannot see a virus. It's not like COVID-19 have, ha, has on a carnival costume and waving a flag and say, hey, I over, I'm over here. You may be going about your business, doing all the necessary precautions. What, what they say, the, the three W's yes. and everything, wearing their mask, being the most cleanly <laughs> and hygienic person. And you could be the unfortunate person to pick it up. Yeah. So, so I think we need to stop casting blame or assigning blame and, and forming groups. Because you understand? if I'm vaccinated. Mm-hmm. I took a maxi this morning or a taxi to get mm-hmm. to work. Money changed hands. Yes. I hold the door. Mm-hmm. Somebody sneezes or on my clothes. Something. Right. I'm not sanitizing my clothes. Because well, you're on your way to work. I'm on my way to work. Yeah. I'm not sanitizing all that. Mm-hmm. I'm sanitizing my hands. Mm-hmm. But I may go to work past and r- may be passing through a tight space and brush on a coworker. You stand up at the water cooler. Right. Something may be on my sleeve and I touch the water cooler and somebody passed and touched it at the same time and anything could happen. Yeah. So you cannot, as they say, put blame on anyone. Yeah, I, I don't... That is ridiculous. I don't believe in the assigning blame or saying one group is a threat to the other. That's, the fact is, the impact is that we can all contract and we can all spread it, Right. 
difference so is the difference is when you get your vaccine, you give yourself a fighting chance to fight off the virus and survive. If you should get it if you if you happen to get it. So that's that for me. That's a big impact because that there what we're just talking about now considers these the societal impact. Meaning the longer many of us take to get vaccinated, the longer COVID nineteen is with us. Yeah? Yes, and that by that narrative, mm -hmm. that narrative make, makes people rebellious nature comes okay. to front. They will be like, oh, I can't do so and so if I do, I'm not doing it. Okay, and, and that's fine. I respect everybody's rights to choose to do whatever, but I'm just saying, in your deliberations, also consider that what your decision, whether you take the vaccine or not, not only has a personal impact, not only impacts your family, but it also, by extension, impacts the society. So just some things to consider. Yeah. You and know, you my know? thing is, don't not take the vaccine because of spite. Yeah. Because they think, no, nah, they, they intruded on my rights. Mm -hmm. not, that's not a, a good reason. Yeah. Okay, because you are not sure if you saw it, but you saw what happened in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I saw, uh, yes, I saw a clip on Facebook, on TTC's Facebook page just now with uh, a, a, a picture of a bloodied man. Yeah. <laughs> His shit was bloody that he was taken. Was yeah. got, they say, um, you still incoming, that he was hit with a stone. Yes. On his way to the parliament to pass a mandatory bill. Yes. So I know that we've been talking for some time. We have two other segments to get through in this podcast. I would conclude our conversation around the vaccine or whether to vaccinate or terminate. My choice is I'm not going to terminate any relationship. Meaning, if I have a loved one who chooses not to get the vaccine, I will find avenues using some of the tips that we discuss, listen, you know, provide them with information from legitimate sources, try some incentives, help them consider the impacts not only to themselves, the family, but the society at, at large, to try to convey them, to sway them, while not overwhelming them. Right? Th that's, that's, that would be my strategy. Yeah, because it comes down to, you don't want to see them die. Yes. That's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. That is the impact we are talking about. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, let me end this segment of the podcast episode by saying, please don't let a perceived infringement on your rights be the reason that your loved ones have to read you your last rights. I will repeat, please don't let a perceived infringement on your R-I-G-H-T-S be the reason that your loved ones have to read you your last R I T E S, right? That's 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 my that's my plea, because I don't want to see any more people dying. You and I know of people that have been impacted by this, uh, by uh, and and we have lost loved ones for other reasons in these last times. I don't I don't want to lose any more persons. I I I'm shocked by how many persons have died locally from COVID-19 yeah. thus far. That, that, I mean, we were doing so good at the outset, and I wish we could get back to, to that where we, <laughs> we had less than 100. Where we were winning. Yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we, we can't bring those people back to life, but I hope that we don't lose anymore. So, th so that's my plea to all our listeners, whether you are local to Trinidad and Tobago or whether you are one of our international listeners, please stop to consider, you know, some of the, the tips that we have outlined today. Are we moving from tips to thing to eat? Thing to eat? <laughs> I was thinking about this. How does it feel to be that guy who takes lunch to work every day? Having your significant other cook it for you, you know, every time you could come on both sides. Yeah, you know, he did this or she did this, and you know, everybody like, hmm, 
Yeah. How does that feel? How is that feeling? Oh, Suki Suki now. Listen, do you know why he asking that question, people? He knows. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, it feels wonderful. It feels wonderful, but I feel like if you're marrying up this thing to each segment with the last segment of our podcast too, eh? Yes, it is. I right? Uh, I like it. But it feels, it feels great. Um, yes, we took our holiday from the podcast and Joe has been on holidays as well. <laughs> so I've been blessed to, to have him prepare my coffee in the morning. Ooh. Coffee in the morning. Special, special. <laughs> Folks, I ain't gonna lie, but I make coffee better than her, so. All right. All right. <laughs> nah, we know you are the chef. Joe is the designated chef in the household, right? I'm just the sous chef. I always say, chef, what do you need me to cut up? <laughs> <laughs> no shame about it. He's the chef of the house. Um, so it feels great. It, it's, honestly, it feels good. And I know that we were talking about the COVID-19 and the virus and everything, but I think that's one of my comforts that I don't have to put myself at risk having to go out and purchase food every day at work. You yeah. know, that you, I could just literally prepare, you know, have something prepared from home, warm it up, consume it. And that's one less risk of me contracting yeah. covid <laughs> that's so so it's a double blessing i get you know you get well, breakfast in the morning and ooh, dinner in the night all of that are taking everything hey. everything hey. <laughs> <laughs> so people you know we want to know like what have you enjoyed cooking together you know how, how if you've been at home or one party has been at home and one party has to leave the house you know have you been spoiled? You know, has your significant other cooked or prepared something for you? I mean, you feel special. <laughs> In any which way, drop lunch off at the office. Mm-hmm. Any, any, anything, let's know. Yeah. You know, what has done it for you for these past few weeks? Yes. In other words, has your significant other filled your love tank? Yeah. Yes. Right now, we're happy. So, our love tank is full. Hmm. And it's definitely full, like I said, because the thing I was going to bring up is that you have prepared my coffee in the morning, made sure that I had my lunch and my water and everything. And it has been wonderful having you around for the last few weeks. Like, not having to say, babe, when you're coming home. (laughs) (laughs) Because you've been home. (laughs) So that's been wonderful. That has filled my love tank. Awesome. What has filled your love tank? Doing it. That filled my love tank. We mean, ooh. I haven't. Clarify for the listeners, because the listeners will be like, what has he been doing it? I'm a giver. <laughs> okay. I like to give. I like doing stuff. For. Okay, folks. So Acts of service. When I, I have been home for a couple of weeks, and I have not slept late. Okay. Really and truly, I have not slept late because I get up to make sure that to see you off properly. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not like you're home and normally I wake up at five o'clock and I'm home and you say, well, okay, I'm home now, so I can wake up at eight. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like that. I actually, I get up six, half six, or not even half six because she's looking to leave the house at half six. So, yeah, it had to be about half five, six o'clock. Mm-hmm. I'm up. So, yeah. So, just doing that, making sure, stand at the door and leave you goodbye. Like, yeah, have a good day, you know? So, yeah, I enjoy that. And seeing you leave and you're happy. You know, I'm sure that you have something to eat, have water. You know? Mm-hmm. So, at least most you have to worry about is doing your job and driving to and from work by the grace of God. Yeah. That's it. And making sure I enjoy my lunch and wash the bowl so I can get some more to <laughs> <laughs> Bring back my bowl. That's actually the other thing, eh? <laughs> for real, for real. We, we, we have to make sure that, you know, we do our little part <laughs> to keep the food coming. <laughs> All right. 
Thank you for listening to the Journey to Forever podcast. We would love to have you join the Forever family by connecting with us on Instagram at Journey to Forever TT and subscribing to the podcast on whatever app you're listening to this episode on. In this family, we believe that sharing is caring, so be sure to share and discuss this episode with someone you love. Until next time, remember that forever love is a journey, not a destination, and the fuel that keeps you going is communication. Have a good one, folks. Bye. Bye.